are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is going to be the worst female serial killer in history, and that is the Blood Countess. That's right, a female serial killer with almost 650 victims. And the most baffling part is the amount of time this went on and the amount of people who knew but couldn't stop her. Um, and by the way, these names are very hard to pronounce, so if I completely butcher them, I am so, so sorry, but I am trying my best. By the way, I do post so much content like this and will be for this suspect summer coming up. So if you want to be a part of that, then subscribe down below. Now let's get back to the story. So her name was Elizabeth Bathory and in 1560, she was a noble woman who was actually born into a very powerful family. She was cousin to the King of Hungary of Transylvania and had so much power. Growing up, Elizabeth lived in the Exed Castle and was said to have a dream life. However, she did experience a sort of sickness. It was called a falling sickness back then, which we now know today is probably like an epilepsy thing, suffering from seizures. But treatment for it back then, because it wasn't even known what it was, it was just called falling sickness. So the way they treated it was getting a non-epileptic's blood and smearing it on her lips as well as giving her a concoction of a non-epileptic's blood as well as part of their skull after she had already had these seizures. And this is what was thought to be treatment for it. It in fact didn't help, but that's what they thought it would help. Elizabeth was educated, she was brilliant, and she was beautiful. Too bad she would turn into one of the most prolific serial killers of all time. See, by the age of 10, Elizabeth was marrying a 15-year-old nobleman named Fernick Nadaski, and this was basically a political arrangement between the two families, the Nadaskis and the Bathories, who, you know, combined would have more power. So by the age of 10, she was engaged. But by the age of 13, they were not yet married and Elizabeth actually had a baby. And this was by a peasant boy. And, you know, there was no, there was no mercy for her or the baby. The baby was immediately sent to another home outside of this immediate village to be taken care of and she was basically stripped of all rights from this baby. And after hearing about the pregnancy, Fernick, who was engaged to her, was said to have fed the peasant boy to wolves. And back in this time, that is highly likely considering how violent they were and aggressive and the people in power could really do anything they wanted, kind of like today. When Elizabeth was 15, she did end up marrying Vernick and she refused to take his last name because Bathory was higher and social status and so she kept her name and he got hers. They married on May 8th of 1575 with 4,500 people in attendance. Fernick for the wedding gifted Elizabeth her very own castle. After they got married they spent very little time together. You know Elizabeth was dealing with the affairs of the lands and business. Her husband on the other hand was fighting in a war and he was said to be a brilliant warrior. He was the chief commander of the Hungarian troops and they called him Black Knight. During the long war of 1593 and 1606, Elizabeth actually had to defend her village and her husband's castle, her their property, and give refuge to the actual citizens who lived in the village nearby, housing them and feeding them and all of that. But when Elizabeth and Fernick did spend time together, it was full of torture that they both enjoyed very much. See, Fernick would teach Elizabeth things that they both enjoyed learning about and that was torturing people and torture methods and one of the things that they loved to do was take their young servants and put a rolled up piece of oil paper between their toes and set it on fire. They also used a clawed glove to scratch up these servants' faces, but it was just really the torture and abuse at that time, not killing. The two had five children altogether. I don't think that they were tortured, but 
who really knows. Six years later, however, it would get even worse. It was 1601 and a woman named Anna Darvolia would enter the household to help out, be kind of a servant of sorts, help out with the children, and she was allegedly a witch and she taught Elizabeth so much more than she knew about torture and taught her to kill. At this time, servants began to go missing and nobody had the guts to stand up and ask what was happening to them. Elizabeth was so powerful that they basically had no voice. They couldn't say anything and if they did, she would just say that they died of cholera and that's actually the excuse she gave a lot and she would have priests come to her castle and do a ceremony for the people who had died of cholera, even though we now know that wasn't it. But there was a priest who began to get very suspicious, funeral after funeral, having to go to this castle, that they were strangely dying of this disease every single time. And eventually this priest said, I need to exhume the body to make sure that this is actually what's happening as it continues to happen. But he was immediately shut down by Elizabeth and there was nothing he could do about it. Three years later, on January 4th, 1604, Fernick actually passed away from what it was believed to be paralysis, and this is when Elizabeth spiraled even further into darkness, and the rumors were spreading at this time that she was a killer, that, you know, all these servants were going missing, but still no one could touch her. After so many times of getting servants' girls to come to her and then having to replace them and not having anybody to actually be the servant girl, she decided to start luring girls from the local villages to come to her to kill them without having to replace her servants. And she also had help from a few other people. She had Anna Darvolia, who was the one who taught her to kill in the first place. She had the nurse of her children, who was Ilana Joe, and she also had a friend named Dorka and a washerwoman named Catalin. And they were all pretty much involved, whether they wanted to or just didn't want to be killed. It wasn't really specified, but they were all involved in helping her. Before doing that, when it was the servant girls being killed, they were between 10 to 14 years old and they were being tortured in so many horrific ways. If they messed up in any way, they would be stripped down naked, they would be beaten, they would be mutilated from their hands, they would be burned, have flesh bitten off of them, they would be frozen, starved to death, stabbed with needles, just everything you can possibly imagine they did to these people. They even had their lips sewn together, they were covered in honey so the bugs would eat at them. And often these physical methods of torture would be followed by psychological and they would be kept in a torture chamber covered with blood. Although the floors were covered, they would be just talked to so horribly and manipulated. By 1909, Anna, her killing partner in crime, had passed and Elizabeth had wanted to move on from servants because mainly there wasn't any left. She had killed most of them and she wanted to move on to higher social status and that was noble women. And how was she going to lure them into her home? Well, she was going to start a finishing school to teach etiquette and make them the best noble women they could be while really torturing them and killing them. The only problem was Elizabeth was so wrapped up and so out of her mind by this point that she didn't realize that these people's parents would have just as much power as she did and would come looking for their children. Elizabeth would simply state when anybody asked that nothing had happened to them or that one of the girls in the group had killed them all before committing suicide. Nobody believed this outlander story, of course, and they began to go to King, and in 1610, he ordered an investigation against her. Gregory Thurzo was the man put on the case, which was very hard for him, considering he was actually Fernick's friend before he passed, and he had promised Fernick he would take care of Elizabeth after he had gone, and now he was investigating her. The investigation was incredible with over 300 witnesses saying that they had either seen her torture, they had been a victim of it and gotten away, or they had heard rumors about it. 
it. But Gregory felt so horrible that he actually contacted Elizabeth's family before doing anything and said that when he arrested her, he wouldn't make her go to trial. She would go straight to prison so she didn't have to face any of the public scrutiny. And the, the family of Elizabeth really didn't seem to care all that much. In fact, they didn't try to say, oh, she would never do this. You've got the wrong girl. It was almost like they knew what she was doing. That December, Gregory and the king both invited themselves to the Bathory Castle. And while they were there, they were having such a lovely dinner. Elizabeth was so kind. But after one bite into their cake, both Gregory and the king began to feel ill and they were so afraid that they had been poisoned that they immediately left. And of course, this made Elizabeth look even more guilty, but she didn't seem to care or even know. And by December 30th, Gregory and an army of men were actually stationed outside her castle, kind of hidden away. And at this point, they actually heard Elizabeth walk outside with a woman saying that she was actually going to cast a spell on Gregory to make him die and to make sure she was okay. As they turned around to go inside, the men crept in after them and found a mutilated body right at the door and two more dead just inside. The screams then led them to the torture chamber full of servants who were slowly being tortured to death. At this point, Elizabeth was arrested and she said that it was all her servants that did this, that she had nothing to do with it, but she also had 360 people testifying against her. She was put under house arrest while Gregory talked to the king because the king had wanted to sentence her to death and of course, Gregory being Veronica's friend didn't want to do that. So they kind of came to a compromise and it's thought to be because Elizabeth had actually granted the king a loan because that he actually needed some money to pay off some debt. And so Elizabeth, having so much money, had granted him a loan that he had never paid back. And so this was thought to be kind of the king's way of paying her back. Trials were held, however, and on January 2nd of 1611, the first one, and then five days later, the second one. And at this point, they had all of those testimonies of people coming forward saying what they had done and escaped from, what they had heard, what they had seen against Elizabeth. The cadavers of these bodies were also looked at in the courtroom. Many people said that Elizabeth's favorite weapon was a pair of scissors and that she would cut off body parts and that she loved to slice between their fingers. Now, the number of actual victims vary between each testimony, but the largest one that anyone had said was 650 victims. And that was because the servant who actually worked for Elizabeth said that she had kept a diary of sorts. And this had all of their names in it and how they killed them, and it added up to 650. However, I'm not sure if this diary was ever actually found. It's not known where it is today, but I don't know if back then they actually did have it. Elizabeth was then placed in solitary confinement in her own castle where she was bricked up inside with only a slot for, of course, the venting and then a place to slide her food. And when investigators and priests would go and talk to her, she continued to say she didn't do it and that her servants did and she was scared of them. So that's why she didn't stop them. Her accomplices were also brought to trial and had a much more horrific death than she did, even being burned at the stake. But then four years later on August 21st of 1614, Elizabeth, who was in her solitary confinement, was talking to the bodyguard outside saying that her hands were cold. This bodyguard said that it was nothing, she'd be fine to go lie down, but the next morning she was found dead. Originally she was buried at the church, but when so many people of the village began to have an uproar about this saying she shouldn't be buried anywhere near them, they uprooted her to where she had grown up and, and the castle she grew up in. But many people have theorized as to why Elizabeth did this, if she just had a love for killing and torturing, if she was a cannibal, if she was possibly a vampire, if she liked to drink or bathe in the blood of her victims to have a more youthful appearance. 
that's a huge one, but none of these have actually ever been confirmed. But some say this wasn't exactly the story, and there's a lot of conspiracy theories around this case because the king did owe her a lot of debt, and you know, of course, the king was her cousin. And some people say that this whole story wasn't true at all, and that the king wanted to get rid of her because he didn't want to pay her back the debt, he didn't want to give her any more power, and so he decided to incriminate her and make it so she could not even attend her own trial. And he was the one who wanted her sentenced to death. I mean, some of these witnesses' statements were very contradictory and she did have a lot of land and this castle that made her powerful. She also didn't have a husband, which at that time, you know, a woman in power could have been very intimidating to a man when she didn't have a man by her side. Could this have all led to the king making this whole twisted thing against his own cousin? I mean, maybe she did abuse her servants, but it just wasn't to this degree and maybe she didn't kill them. I mean, there's of course no pictures from this time. We can't say if this crime scene was real or not, but I just think that this is absolutely crazy. I think this could have just been an evil woman that was the worst female serial killer in history. The fact that she got away with it for so long and people knew about it. It wasn't because she was some master manipulator who hid behind a mask and nobody knew about. Everybody knew she was crazy and they couldn't do a darn thing. But I'd love to hear your opinions on this case and if you knew about Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess, if you like the more historical true crime cases because I just find them the most interesting. I think knowing how investigators handled cases back then, what people could get away with way back in the day, compared to now is so interesting. So let me know that as well. Don't forget to thumbs up and don't forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye.